So the bills allocate $200 million in emergency funding. The money will go toward establishing quarantine sites, freeing up hospital beds, and helping businesses sidelined by this pandemic. We're going to remain committed one way or another to get people unemployment compensation through this crisis. We know how critical this is. We know how many people that are going to experience, uh, we hope, short-term unemployment. But we want to be there for them. Their families are certainly in anxiety about this right now. We've also learned there is new help tonight for anyone facing eviction during the crisis. King 5's Vanessa Mashanya live in Seattle tonight with that part of our coverage. Vanessa. Mark, good evening. So the King County Sheriff and the Mayor of Seattle have both come up with ways to help residents, businesses and nonprofits avoid being evicted. Now, the way each go about doing that is different, but the goal is the same here to provide a little assurance in a very uncertain time. West Seattle's Husky Deli is operating much like it has for 88 years, steadily filling orders for ice cream and sandwiches, despite some obvious changes. You got to be able to have your comfort food in these times. Owner Jack Miller says they're still busy with takeout and delivery. The open sign on his window, a severe juxtaposition to the paper on his neighbors. It's a hard time as a business owner because you want to take care of your help. I mean, they're your people. And if you can't work them and pay them, you worry about them paying their rent and feeding themselves and all that. Both the city of Seattle and the King County Sheriff's Office recognize the hardships for tenants and with different orders, they're offering relief. Mayor Jenny Durkin has issued a temporary and immediate moratorium on evictions, both residential and commercial. The King County Sheriff's Office says landlords can still serve notices, but that they won't execute them in court. In most, if not all cases, you need to have an eviction notice or a 14 day notice uh, in order to access emergency rental assistance. That's Brett Waller with the Washington Multifamily Housing Association. His group applauds the Sheriff's Office, but has concerns about Seattle's moratorium. Worried that if there's no initial eviction notice by the landlord, the tenant's access to rental assistance is limited. We're actively working with the city to help address that issue so that, you know, uh, when when this crisis is over with, um, that tenants aren't receiving notices for multiple months of rent and having multiple months of rent due. I can't imagine kicking people out at a time like this. Back at Husky, Jack is on board with efforts to help workers like his have some sense of security. It's kind of like the sky is falling if you're not, if, but you got to keep your head and, and we'll all get through this. So a couple of things about the Seattle moratorium. So tenants are still expected to pay rent and if they have trouble doing so, landlords are then encouraged to come up with some sort of reasonable payment plan. So again, that tenant is not stuck with a huge rent bill when those moratoriums are lifted. And in the meantime, anyone who is having financial difficulties right now because of COVID-19, they're encouraged to reach out to the Washington State uh, Employment Security Department. They'll help you match you up to resources. They'll help you out for different situations. Live in Seattle, Vanessa Mishanya, King 5 News. Vanessa, thank you. Meantime, the city of Tacoma announced plans today to try to help business owners. Officials are planning micro loans up to $15,000 for qualified small businesses. Tacoma's mayor, Victoria Woodards, understands this will impact employees and their families. What we want to make sure is that we're giving you peace of mind to know that you can care for yourselves and your families. Tacoma Public Utilities will also suspend disconnections for all residents and business owners. There's also a plan in Tacoma to try to stop evictions and foreclosures there. Tacoma Public Utilities went a step further and allocated $1 million in emergency funds for customers struggling to pay their bills. The program will offer up to $250 in utility credit. To be eligible, customers must have an income within 200% of the federal poverty guidelines. Testing for the coronavirus is being reserved for those who are already showing symptoms. There are now two drive through testing sites open for appointments only in King County. One is outside Kaiser Permanente Medical Offices in Linwood, the other at the University of Washington. The actual test is being run at our main University of Washington lab. Uh, the turnaround time on the test has been variable because we are just into the early rise of testing. So um, we, are tell we are telling patients to expect several days. UW Medicine says it plans to announce new mobile locations by the end of this week. 
Well, today, SDOT introduced new temporary food pickup areas here in Seattle to help support local restaurants transitioning to takeout and delivery service. The load zones have been converted into spots where diners can stop curbside to pick up their takeout orders. SDOT plans to have most of these zones in high traffic areas. Well, Safeway and Albertsons, they are stepping up with special hours to help vulnerable people who need to shop. The two chains will reserve shopping hours every Tuesday and Thursday from 7 to 9 a.m. for senior citizens and other at-risk populations. They're asking other customers to help out by reserving those hours for those in need. Also, uh, customers are going to uh, be able to shop after those hours. So the Tulalip tribes shut down their casinos today, but they did not let all of that food in their restaurants go to waste. They donated 2,700 pounds to the Marysville Community Food Bank, things like fresh produce, meat, dairy, and bread. The food bank says that it was a big help because it's seen a drop in donations in recent weeks. It's a crazy time for us. We pick up most of our donations come from the grocery stores, and we're seeing a decrease between well, down to about 50% to a third of what we usually get. The food bank is changing how it gives out food to help prevent the spread of coronavirus. People will tell them what they need and volunteers will deliver that food outside. As restaurants and bars across Seattle struggle to find their footing after that statewide shutdown, restaurateur Ethan Stoll has laid off a large part of his staff. Stoll owns 15 restaurants in Seattle. He says he plans to push through the outbreak with his remaining staff. So at his Ballard Pizza Company, he's working with three other staff members to make pizzas for takeout and delivery. It's obviously a horrible thing that's happening to our industry. Um, you know, I'm not worried about the company at all. Uh, I'm worried about employees and, um, you know, how they, how they make do. Stowell says his mission is to bring all of his employees back to work as soon as possible. Meantime, advocacy groups are asking Governor Jay Inslee to use clemency and other powers to release more than 1,000 prisoners during the virus outbreak. According to the Seattle Times, representatives of 14 groups wrote a letter to the governor asking inmates over the age of 56 be released, as well as those who are within six months of their release date. The DOC has not announced any cases of coronavirus in the state's prison system so far. Tackling this pandemic is a national emergency, akin to fighting a war. And it's going to require leadership and cooperation from every level of government. And it's going to require us to move thoughtfully and decisively to quickly address both the public health crisis as well as the economic crisis. Democratic presidential candidate Joe Biden speaking tonight from his home in Delaware. The former VP addressed the coronavirus pandemic and then addressed the primary elections held in several states today. Three states held those primaries, and Joe Biden was a projected winner in Florida, also in Illinois, beating Senator Bernie Sanders by a large margin. And the Associated Press has called the Arizona race in his favor, too. NBC's Jay Gray reports tonight on this election day that had coronavirus on the minds of many voters. Using caution and with poll workers constantly cleaning, voters mark their ballots in Florida, Illinois, and Arizona. I think it's my um, duty as an American to come out and um, do my patriotic duty and vote. I always personally go to the polling place. A duty many carry out wearing gloves, masks, and using their own pins blue tape on the floor at this polling station to keep voters six feet apart. We can address this crisis, we can minimize the pain, and let us do just that. So let us go forward. Coronavirus making Tuesday's primaries not super, but surreal.